Welcome back to my Zone 3 Minnesota garden in September. So September means that gardening season is coming to a close here. My first expected frost date is September 23rd and we've already seen a couple frosts. So we got down to 32 degrees and it was actually pretty early on. I want to say it was September 11th, 13th, somewhere in there. But since then it's been pretty fair and we don't have any other frosts in the horizon. So pretty excited that we'll have an extended harvest hopefully into at least early October. But those couple days hitting that 32 degrees, I did experience a little bit of frost damage. So you'll see that as we do the tour. Let's dive in. So before we get into the detailed tour, I just wanna give you a brief overview of how I've set up this garden. So it is 25 feet deep and it's about 52 feet wide. And I chose to do an in-ground garden for a couple reasons. One is we had to put in this garden fast. We just moved to this new homestead here in the north woods of Minnesota and we didn't gain possession until June 30th. But I was so thankful that the previous owners were wonderful and they let me get in here early to put in my garden. So at the end of May, so a month before we actually owned the place, I was able to come over with Ryan, my husband and my parents and we put this garden space in. So we had to do it fast. And honestly, it's been working out really well. I've been thrilled with how well it's turned out. We just rented a tiller for a hundred bucks and got a trailer load of composted cow manure from my local raw milk farm. And that was only a hundred bucks. So for $200, I got this entire garden space and I've been so thrilled with how it's been turning out. Now there were definitely some challenges along the way. I have heavy clay soil and there were a lot of rocks. So it took a bit of doing to get it workable soil, but overall, pretty happy with it. So let's dive in. One last thing to mention is my new method that I've been trying this year is mulching with organic straw. And then in the walking paths, I've been using cardboard to really help with weed control because I knew with us moving here, I would not have the time that I would have liked to really keep up on weeding. And so far, so good. I've really been enjoying this method and I will definitely, I think, keep that going. So let's start with row one. These are all largely peppers. And I know last month I told you guys that I was kind of disappointed with how they were doing. They weren't producing much, but really they've turned the corner in the last month. I think they just needed a little bit more time and more water. We've gotten a lot more rain. It's actually been raining nonstop for the last five days or so. So I'm ready for some sunshine, but I have lots of cayenne peppers going. I was able to harvest quite a bit already. So I have a few jars of fermented hot sauce going in the pantry. So I can't wait to get that going. I'm finally starting to get some habaneros. I have not picked any yet. It looks like I have a couple just in time. And then here are a bunch of jalapenos. So yay! So definitely getting some hot peppers. And then down here are more of my sweet peppers. And then finally at the end are the poblanos. I love to freeze these. These are wonderful just thrown into soups and stews all winter long. And then here are my sad cucumbers. These guys did not fare the frost very well. So pretty much just kind of left them alone. I need to pull them down. We are still somehow getting a couple cucumbers. So A plus effort for the cucumbers, that's for sure. And then below the cucumbers, I have the rutabagas. I was so rooting for these, but I really don't think anything's gonna happen. I don't know if it was just not quite enough sunshine. You can see there's a lot of overshadowing from the peppers and the tomatoes, but rutabagas don't necessarily need a ton of sunlight either. So we'll just call that a failure for this year and try again next year. Next, I have almost two full rows of tomatoes. I didn't intend on planting this many. I just ended up starting a lot of plants and then, you know, you hate to throw them away. So here we go. And now I'm completely <laughs> overloaded with tomatoes. I have a few different cherry tomatoes, but most of it are these Romas. And since I have such a short growing season, I went ahead and topped my plants. So I actually have a blog post on this if you wanna check it out. So you can kind of hurry along the ripening of the tomatoes. So I went ahead and topped them a month before my expected frost date, so about a month ago, and it's been working really well. Pretty much all of my tomatoes are red now. I do have a few straggler greens, but yeah, we are definitely doing all the tomato things right now. I think I'm canning every single night trying to pack things away. So I think I probably overdid it on the tomatoes and I'll do a little bit less next year, but I'll take it. 
And I like to keep my nightshades together so you'll notice the peppers are over here, the tomatoes here, and then down here are eggplant. Aren't these just beautiful? I love this variety. They're wonderful on the grill. I'll also pan fry them and they're doing well. If you remember from my August tour, I was kind of questioning the eggplant situation, but they're doing really well now. So I think they just needed a little bit more time. And what you'll notice in my garden is there's a lot of flowers still. So I love to companion plant with calendula and marigolds. So these were calendula, they're not blooming so much anymore. There were a bunch of calendula back there too. So the flowers are definitely at the end of their life cycle, but they're still definitely producing some blooms for those pollinators. They're also great at repelling pests. And then here is my zucchini plant. It's looking a little sad from that frost. The squash family just doesn't do so great in those cooler temperatures, but it's still producing. So it was just barely a little frost nipped. So I left it there, I didn't pull it out. And I'm glad that I didn't because I'm still getting lots of zucchini. I'm still picking some almost every day. And then let's keep going down here. So this is a whole patch of calendula and we're nearing the point where I can start harvesting the seeds. So I usually deadhead the flowers in the summer to keep it blooming, but toward the end of the season, I just let them go. And you can see that these seeds are starting to dry out. These are perfect to harvest and I'm gonna use these seeds for planting next year. Now this space has transformed a little bit from my last tour. This was all broccoli plants before and I pulled some out because I was not getting any side shoots and I was kind of antsy to get some fall plantings in. So I went ahead and pulled some out, but I left a few just to see. And I'm glad that I did because you can see I am now getting little side shoots. So once you harvest that main broccoli head, the plant is not done yet. So you can go back and just snap these off and continue to enjoy little broccolis. And then when I planted in its place are some little baby greens. So these are perfect for harvesting. I should get in here and snip some off. And these are a cut and come again. So you cut kind of above the, the roots there. You wanna leave some greens and then it'll just keep producing. So this is wonderful for colder temperatures. It's gonna to tolerate frost really well. And then I just have a variety of different radishes and turnips. They're not quite ready yet, but within a week or two, I think we'll be picking. And then here is a new broccoli plant. So it has not formed a head yet. So I'm hoping we'll get a harvest. We'll see if I timed that one okay. And then as we go around on this side, I have four big Brussels sprout plants. They're doing lovely. We'll look at them in detail in a moment. But down below are my kohlrabi and they seem to be doing okay. I tend to get them a little bit bigger than this, especially in the spring. Fall is just a little harder, but I think we'll definitely be able to enjoy these. Next, let's look at these Brussels sprouts. This one ended up kind of puny. I'm not sure why they're all treated exactly the same, but these three are looking great. I mean, these are pretty darn tall. I'd say four feet and the Brussels development is looking really, really good. So I'm pleased with these. So the way Brussels sprouts work is these bottom sprouts are gonna be developing first. And as it grows up, they are smaller and smaller. So toward the top, they can be pretty tiny. And so about a month before my expected first hard frost, so hard frost is typically about two weeks after your expected first frost is when I snipped these. So about two weeks ago, I went ahead and snipped off the growing tip. And so that's gonna force the plant to work on producing what it has instead of keeping going and producing new growth that ultimately won't ripen in time before it really freezes. Now, thankfully, Brussels sprouts can handle quite cool temperatures, definitely into the upper 20s, maybe even the lower 20s if you're lucky. So we don't have to worry too much, but ultimately it's gonna get to negative 30 here in Minnesota. So this isn't gonna last forever, but overall, I think we're looking really good. And then down here, I have more broccoli plants. This is a previously harvested one that I'm leaving for some side shoots. We're getting a little bit, but not so much from this plant. Here, I still have a few more cabbage heads. Now this one's interesting. It developed a double cabbage head from the same plant. There you can see, same plant. So, hey, I'll take it. And I had a bunch more other cabbage plants here. So I already made my sauerkraut for the year and my kimchi with my Napa cabbage. So we're just gonna use these ones for fresh eating. Here we have more marigolds and these are all radishes and they are perfect. We've been harvesting 
these and enjoying these. You can also dehydrate them into chips. I have a blog post on my website showing you how to do these. And then here we have a few more new broccoli plants. So these guys are at least starting to form a head. This one's looking really good. Should be able to harvest this one before long. And then this one here isn't really doing much. So it always amazes me how plants will be so different from each other, even if they're treated and started the same way. Here's more calendula. I need to definitely get in there and harvest some seeds. Here's a bunch of celery. I haven't been harvesting much from it, but it looks halfway decent. I think I'll definitely plan on freeze drying a lot of this. So then I can just throw it in for any soups or stews that call for celery all winter long. Basil is always the first to go anytime it freezes. So it definitely got hit hard with that frost. It was going to seed anyway, so I'm not too upset with losing the basil. All the rest of the herbs are looking great though. This parsley is looking amazing. This is a giant parsley variety. I just love it. I've been freeze drying and dehydrating a lot of it. I need to do a little bit more. And then on the side is the rosemary. It's just a little guy. I've been picking a lot of it, so it's been trimmed recently. And then this is lemongrass. Not only does it help repel mosquitoes, hooray, but I love to cook with it too. So you get these wonderful kind of bulbs on the bottom, and then I just throw them all in a Ziploc bag and they are great for cooking with. And here is lemon balm, another wonderful herb. I like to dry it and use it for teas. It's also great muddled in a glass of cold ice water. It's a great refreshing drink in the summer. And then underneath we have thyme. So I have six different clusters of thyme tucked in underneath a lot of these herbs and they seem pretty happy where they're at. I've definitely been harvesting a lot of those and tucking them away in my spice jars. And then next to the lemon bulb is the sage. So far so good. It's not the prettiest sage I've ever grown, but I'll take it. More calendula here. And then I have a whole wall of kale. We love kale around here. It's just great for an easy salad. You can throw it in soups. You can stir fry it. And then I freeze a lot of it. So I'll just tear it up into bite-sized pieces, stuff it in a gallon Ziploc bag and right into the freezer. I don't even blanch it. And then it's great to just throw into soups in the winter, smoothies, you name it. And then over here is the biggest pumpkin that I've ever grown in my life. I'm pretty excited about this, but also a little bit sad. You can see on the side there, there's a little bit of a hole. It got too close to my electric fence. And so I had to scooch it back um, so it doesn't get zapped anymore. So this one will not be good for long-term storage. So when I'm ready to pick it, we'll just process it all. So I like to turn it into pumpkin puree and then I'll freeze it in different portion sizes. So like one cup, two cup, three cup, whatever my recipes call for. And then over here, it's largely empty. So this is where all my onions were. They are already done. They've been curing and a lot of them are already braided and in storage. If you'd like to look at my method of how to braid onions, I have another YouTube video showing how to do that. It's a really fun way to be able to string them up and it's just very functional to be able to hang them, especially if you're limited on storage space. So let's go ahead to the end where I do still have a couple things in the onion family. So I have leeks. So I think these are probably ready to be picked. This is my first year growing leeks. So still experimenting with them, but I think they look pretty darn good. Here is more marigolds. And then here's my dill, which is largely done. I'm just leaving it here to finish out the seed heads. So I'll be harvesting these and saving the seeds for next year. I also like to leave this because it's going to drop seeds and then this will create a nice little dill patch for me automatically next year. And then behind the dill is my corn patch that is interspersed with my winter squash. So I have different rows going here. So I have three large rows of corn and within each row I did two rows of corn if that makes sense. So we have two, we have two, and then we have two and I've long since picked the corn. It's just kind of still here. I'll eventually dig them all out once the garden's done. But if you notice in the middle here, there is a gap in corn. So I have a full row here and I have a little bit and then a little bit because I strung in my little squash plants there. And I love that because then they just kind of go wild underneath the corn patch 
and it has a double benefit. So one is that the squash is gonna provide a living mulch for the corn and really help retain that moisture. And then the corn helps protect the squash once freezing temperatures hit. So when we had that freeze, the squash that had spilled out to the outer edges, it experienced some frost damage, but this stuff in the middle was really quite protected and fared just fine. And I like to grow butternut squash. You'll notice there's quite a few in here. I've already picked a couple, but before long, I'll definitely need to get in there and get the rest taken out. Next are all of my carrots. So I did three rows of carrots along this whole span of 25 feet. Well, I guess maybe 23 since these are flowers and I probably did too many. I'm, we're going to be eating carrots for days. I was not sure that they would do well because this is heavy clay soil. I didn't have a ton of time to really prep it, but honestly, I'm pretty darn happy with how they turned out. We'll pull one out together. Okay, I had to switch hands. So let's go ahead and give it a pull. Look at that. Oh, they're just looking so good. So we've been roasting these. I'm definitely gonna pack a lot of these away in my fridge and I love fermented carrots too. So we'll be using them in a lot of different ways. And then here is where my bush beans were, but they are, have long since finished their course. And so I went ahead and planted some turnips. So these are turnips, these are radishes, and the radishes are looking really good. We've been picking those. The turnips aren't quite ready yet. Look, they're just looking so great. They're loving this cooler temperature. And then all the rain has definitely helped. They're looking happy. And then here is some baby greens. This is a little arugula, hoping it'll get a little bit bigger. And then these are some other baby greens. And then down here was my second round of bush beans. I'm pretty much done harvesting them. It's not producing much anymore. Plus the frost was not kind. So I need to get around to pulling them out. And then over here is where my potatoes are. So I've only pulled a little bit of them out so far. I still need to get out and harvest them, but they're looking really good. We'll dig up one together. Again, I was nervous about how the potato situation would go with this heavy clay soil, but I think they're looking pretty good. Here's one. Yeah, I'm excited. It has good color. I'm not noticing a lot of blemishes. We ate a bunch for dinner last night. I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck this one back in. It's probably time to go ahead and harvest these, but it's been raining so much that I haven't yet. I like to harvest on a dry day. That way the soil kind of falls off. The important thing when tucking potatoes away into long-term storage is not washing them, but you don't want them caked with mud either. So you wanna wait until it's nice and dry and then a lot of the dirt falls off without washing them. And you'll notice our chickens over here still are in their summer digs. We are getting to the end of pushing the boundaries of how long they can stay in this temporary setup. So starting this week, we're gonna move over a more permanent coop situation and build a run for it. I actually posted a YouTube video on our chicken coop remodel. You can go check that out and see how we've created that space. So we need to haul it over here now so that they can use it and then yeah, create a run with a covered run. So in Minnesota, I found that a covered run is worth its weight in gold because um, it keeps the snow out of the run, all the moisture. It encourages them to be out and outside of the coop, which means less poop in the coop, which means less moisture and ultimately less risk for frostbite. So more to come on that. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all these fun happenings. So that is it for our little garden tour for September and it's September 28th. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how things are looking considering we are past our official first frost date. Most of the things are still thriving and doing well. Still have a lot of work ahead of me for food preservation and then ultimately cleaning up this garden space. But yeah, it's been a great gardening year so far. I'm honestly so thrilled with how well it has done considering we threw it in really quickly and I just didn't know what to expect from the soil. So onward and upward, looking forward to next year already.